So I recorded the intro to uh, the video that I'm putting together today um, last weekend, and it didn't quite work the way I had hoped. I had uh, gone switched from screen to screen, and that didn't work for us, so we're going to redo it. Um, we're talking today about uh, the internal framing of the van, and I wanted to talk before we went out and looked at it about uh, how we got to where we are, how what pre-planning we had done uh, prior to uh, the actual construction and uh, putting our order in for our material. So uh, we have done a fair bit of pre-planning on this uh, van. Um, we've been using the, my uh, program called Chief Architect, and oops, I pushed the wrong button. Um, as you can see, we've got kind of the shell of the van. We actually grabbed that from a SketchUp work uh, warehouse. Uh, they, we were able to find a <clears throat> fairly accurate representation of the van and scale it properly. And so when I started doing the interior, the interior build up, I measured the floor. We had a, we had a uh, plastic floor insert and I took as really accurate measurements of that floor area. And we did our design based on the floor, uh, mostly going straight up, although there is quite a taper um, to the van as you get up above about three feet. The, the wall comes in, and I've got that represented by this, this curved section of um, display here, so that when I look at the van straight on, um, you can see although this wall in plan goes straight up, the actual wall curves in a fair bit. So we kept that in mind as we've laid stuff out. And you can see, um, for example, the fridge, which is this block here, um, it's being pushed back as far as it can before it starts to hit this curve in our plan. <clears throat> um, so it's caused things to be forward more than they they would uh, otherwise normally be if you were just looking at the, the floor. So we're talking today about the internal framing, which is this dark lines. And I'm just going to turn everything off except for the uh, framing so you can see what we're doing here. So this framing um, is all representative of, of, of an aluminum extrusion that we're buying. The aluminum extrusion is made by a company called 8020, and it's sold locally in BC by a company called Rocky Mountain Motion Control. I'll pull up their website in a minute. The problem I had when I originally tried to do this video was I tried to overlay these uh, other um, uh, screens that I want to show you, and that didn't work very well. So we'll have to do all the stuff here first, and then we'll go over and look at the other screens. Um, so this is uh, showing the framing of the aluminum extrusion and it's accurate in um, dimensions for each piece. So if I click on uh, this piece for instance, it's 21 and 5 eighths long and um, all the extrusion that we're using, almost all the extrusion we're using is inch and a half by inch and a half. So um, the reason this doesn't kind of go to the end is there's a little end cap piece here that's three eighths of an inch long. Um, but for example, if we look at this, oh, this is another, this one, here's one that says it's 37 inches long. It goes from there to here. Um, that piece is accurate in, in dimension. This piece at 27 inches is accurate in dimension. Uh, so the model represents what I want to cut. So I'm able to do a cut list from this. Um, the advantage of using Chief Architect is I can, let me turn off everything but the uh, extrusion here. I can highlight this area and I can click this button here and it gives me a material list. Now each one of those pieces um, has been given a code number based on the model of the piece of material that it is. So uh, we'll look at this when we get to Rocky Mountain Control's website, but 1515 is the base um, style that we're using. 
uh, 15.02 is, has finished sides and open sides, and I will look at that in a second. But the important part here, the important thing to remember here is this list is telling me what the product is and how long it is. Um, so I, what I did is I took that list, I copy and pasted it into a spreadsheet, and um, we'll pick this up after I change screens. Okay, so we're back. This is uh, Rocky Mountain Con Motion Control's website, and they break their uh, sales. If we go to shop online, they break it down by the, the different series of material that they sell. So the 15 series is the series that I've been using. It's one and a half inches by one and a half inches. This 10 series is one inch by one inch. When you get over to this 20 series, um, it's a metric series, so it's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So anyway, this is the series that I've been using. And there are a number of different profiles within this series. They're all inch and a half by inch and a half or a fraction of that. This is inch and a half by three quarters. And we do have some of this in our plan. Um, but they have, this is the base 15 by 15 um, the, that has four T slots that you can attach things to. A hole down the middle and these corners are all solid. Then they have a, a light version which they uh, extruded some holes in it to use less material and therefore cost less but it's still got the same ribs on the top um, and the sides that the base unit has. Um, this is a double high so this is a 1530 so it's three inches tall, 15 inches wide. This is the base unit that I've used in the back part of the, um, the van where the, the pieces are smooth and there are four T-slots. So that's a 1515LS for light smooth. Um, I've also got some uh, pieces where one side is a finished um, edge. So you can look at it. Oops. So you can look at this and it leaves three open sides and I've also got some where there's two open sides, two open sides and two finished sides. Um, so those are identified separately in my uh, in my drawing. So I said that I copy and pasted that uh, output from the material list to a spreadsheet. So I did that here and then I sorted it by the material that is called for and the size. So this gives me a whole list of, so a 1515, I need one piece, eight and a half inches long, one piece, nine and three quarters, et cetera, et cetera. I then took that cut list um, and I entered it into a cut list optimizer. So I said, okay, my pieces are that I'm ordering are 12 feet long. I entered in one at a time the pieces that I need, so I need one at nine and a half inches, for example, and I had, and once you've done that, you press uh, go and it produces a cut list. It takes the 12 foot long pieces and tells you how, how to best get all the parts you need out of the material you have um, to minimize waste. So I did that and I will come back to that. I'm just going to follow that up. So this is the output from the, uh, the cut list. Uh, website. I had entered all my pieces and then it says for the first, they call them boards, for the first board you're going to cut out a 66 and a 3 8 inch piece and a 69 and 3 8 inch piece and you're going to have a quarter, you're going to use a quarter of an inch in cuts, meaning my cuts are an eighth of an inch thick, and I'm going to have uh, 7.8 inches left over. Um, so it's taken all the pieces I need and it's broken them down into these 15 boards that I uh, have actually ordered. And some of the, uh, some of the waste is like zero inches, one inch, one and a half inches. So it's done a really good job of telling me what pieces to cut out of each board. And then took these dimensions. So I called, I uh, numbered my board. So this was board one. And I did a, I wrote down a sticker and I put the two dimensions on it. Um, and stuck that to board one and then 
board two, I, I wrote down all the dimensions and stuck it to board two. So as I'm cutting the pieces out of those boards, I can scratch them out and I know that I haven't cut, I haven't cut a piece out of the wrong board. So I think that's, uh, that's kind of the intro that I wanted to do and we'll pick it up with some videotaping that we actually did on the weekend. This is the uh, workshop such that it is. Um, this is uh, my labeling system that I was talking about. So this bar started out at 145 inches long. It was number six. And you can see I've taken these pieces off of it because they're scratched out. So the only thing left to come out of this will be a 37 inch piece, which happens to be the piece that we highlighted just by coincidence. So I'm cutting that using my DeWalt chop saw. Um, I'm clamping the down. If it's in multiple pieces and I'm cutting a whole bunch, I'll set up a stop guide. Uh, if it's a one of, I'll just mark it on. I'll use the clamp to lock it down. I'll actually clamp it on this side and then just cut slowly with the uh, chop saw. There are other operations. Sometimes I need to uh, thread it or drill it and I have a, a little uh, tap bit for the uh, DeWalt uh, that taps a thread in the end so I can just drill right through. Um, I might do a video showing technically how I do that with the, I spray it down with WD-40 and keep it clean and stuff. Um, but this is, this is the setup. So I am sitting in the back of the van. This will be what they would call the garage area of the van. Um, on this side is our electrical cabinet. Our batteries are going to go back here. This is our water tank and the water pump and controls and stuff are going to go back here. This is also the bed support. Uh, so from here back uh, will be the single person bed system. Um, it will also be able to open up to a queen size bed. Sleeping will be uh, left to right, east to west, side to side, mm -hmm. however you want to refer to it. Um, in both orientations. Uh, I'm not sure which side Gail's head's going to be on, um, but it will be, one of these two ends will be the headboard and uh, the other will be the foot. If I were sleeping in here, I'd probably put my head at this end so that I can see the, uh, the uh, entrance door. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is our 8020 um, aluminum extrusion. Uh, it's really quite strong. We're working today on how to hold it in place. Um, I've got some clips that hold the top of it to the L track, which is that uh, aluminum track that was part of the original van. Um, so I've got these. Let me get one out here. Nice little bolts here that will actually hold a thousand pounds each. Um, and it just kind of slides into the L track and then locks in place, oops, locks in place over top of one of the holes. So I've got three of those holding this one in place. I've actually got one of those holding this in place where this upright is at the L track. So today I've got to figure out how or where I can drill through the floor and bolt the bottom down to the, uh, the frame of the van. What we haven't filmed is this floor system and what's going on underneath it. This is the finished floor that I'm sitting on. It's sitting on a really thin piece of plywood, which is sitting on some foam. And we actually have radiant floor heating pipes that run through the floor. Um, we don't know if we're gonna hook those up to the heating system right away, but it's an option. Uh, so we've got this serpentine piece of PEX piping that goes under the floor and ends up over by the heater there. So we have to be careful where we drill through the floor uh, so as to not hit one of those pipes. So I'll probably lay out some tape showing where those are. And uh, I have to go underneath and see what we're going to hit if we drill straight through the bottom of the van. So we've got a tripod now and a little remote control. So we're seeing if we can film by ourselves. Um, what I'm working on is trying to figure out how to hold this cabinet down to the floor, to the floor of the van, what I've got is I've got these carriage bolts and they fit perfectly into the bottom of the T-slot. So the hope is that I can drill a hole through the floor of the van, I can put this in the bottom track of the, the bottom T-slot, drop it through the van and bolt it from underneath. 
I'd like to go through a framing member rather than just uh, the sheet metal of the floor because some of these pieces are pretty heavy. So I've lined this square up with the side of the, um, the bottom of this unit, just using the level to hold it in place. And that gives me a line, roughly square line down. And I've measured back. It turns out there's a framing member right here um, that I should be able to hit. Um, but the framing member is thicker than the length of my bolts. But there's one hole uh, through the framing member and I'm thinking I can hit that with one of these bolts. So I'm going to try to do that first. Uh, so I've measured back, whoops, I've measured back where the, uh, from that, that square underneath where the hole is, I've made the same measurement across the top. I think it's right here. So uh, I'm going to try drilling a hole there and see what happens. So the current plan is I've drilled a hole through here um, I've hit kind of the bottom of a deep rib. It's got a bit of a slope on it. But the whole idea here is to do two things, to hold the cabinets down, but to also support them by the cement, uh, the um, steel floor rather than the top of this floor, because this floor is really just supported by the, uh, the styrofoam. Uh, so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna put this aluminum, I've drilled a hole that's big enough for this aluminum tube to go through. Now I've had to shave the bottom of this because there's a that slope of the rib there. But I'm going to cut this so that it's just flush with the floor. And then when I put my aluminum extrusion with the carriage bolt through it, it's going to be pushing down on the on the top of that aluminum piece rather than on the uh, on the floor. So we'll see how that's going to work. So I've cut this uh, piece of aluminum uh, pipe and it is going to fit in there. It's just proud of that floor by, I don't know, sixteenth of an inch. And this piece is going to fit, or the bottom rim, is going to fit just above it. Now I'm actually rocking a bit, so it might be just a little too tall. But the idea is that it will transfer the weight right down to the van floor rather than the, uh, the wooden floor. So I'm just going to sand that down. Just a bit, not a lot, holy crow. 